editor of Control and ControlGlobal.com, with another in the Control ARC's monthly podcast series. Every month we look at issues raised in the cover story of Control with the insights of ARC's analysts. For this month, May 2013, the topic is process safety. And with me today is Barry Young, an analyst at ARC. Barry, thanks for talking to us again. Let's get started here. As I think I told you, the day I began putting this story on paper, the news of the West Texas fertilizer plant explosion came across the wires. And then just a couple of days later came the horrific building collapse in Bangladesh. While the last is not really a matter of process safety per se, it also underscores the fundamental question of why process safety continues to be so hard to achieve. To do justice to plants that are really trying to operate as safely as possible, I say in my story that it, it's not that companies don't want to do this. It's not for want of trying that they can't achieve it. A cynic, however, might say that that's exactly what it is. Many companies just don't try that hard. What's your perspective on that? Well, Nancy, uh, being an optimist, uh, I think most process companies today do try pretty hard to achieve a good safety record. Certainly the financial penalties in place, you know, are quite severe if you do not have a good safety record. And, and the bad publicity and negative effect on the company's brand uh, is, is very significant. It's huge. So uh, the negative financials, uh, the branding uh, negative effects, I think most companies do, do have a, a plan in place. As a matter of fact, most large process companies today do have somebody in the corporate suite uh, with uh, the sole responsibility for safety and security and, and risk analysis. So uh, I'm not going to be a cynic on that. I think uh, most companies are trying hard to, to do something about safety. Okay, so so you would disagree with the fact then that, that after many years and as many tragedies which turn out to have been avoidable, that what's going on in process safety talk is not just lip service. Well, Certainly, uh, we've had some horrible accidents, and you know, if we go back and look at them, yes, some of them could have been avoided, but I think maybe automation can help here. Uh, you know, for a new plant being built today, certainly uh, it'll have a state-of-the-art modern safety system, and that's that's almost mandated by the insurance companies and uh, in order to get the financing, et cetera. The real issue is, you know, what do we do with some of the older plants, with some of the older systems? And, you know, a lot of people say, well, we don't need to modernize it because it is an acceptable risk and, you know, it's probably not going to fail on my watch, so to speak. So, so that's the real issue is with all these older systems that really should be modernized, how do we go about uh, getting the funding to get the, the projects to go ahead? Um, it's very difficult to uh, run a process safety system modernization project. They take a long time. There's a lot of upfront analysis work. So it's, it's a lot more difficult than just replacing your standard DCS system. But this, this is happening. The process safety system market, believe it or not, although nowhere near as big as the DCS market, the process safety system is growing much faster, almost uh, double what the DCS market is, is growing. So I think we're beginning to see people realize that they need to do something and that just uh, sitting still is, is no longer an acceptable risk. You've cited, you know, some, some of the, the sales figures in that. Is there any other evidence of more users and managers realizing that rather than being a drag, on production and a drag on profit process safety is a good investment because of the efficiency it enables. In other words, can we sell process safety to management under the mantra of doing well by doing good? Well, that's, that's a good question because certainly the most common application for a process safety system is emergency sh shutdown. And an ESD system, emergency shutdown, is very difficult to show any kind of ROI on. It's an expense and you only know if it worked is if you have a problem. So a lot of people, unfortunately, might rather spend their money on a new advanced control application where they can show a good payback, you know, in a year or something like that, 
rather than replace uh, a safety system. But there, there are some safety systems now being applied in applications where there is a payback. We're beginning to see a trend where rather than use DCS, some companies are actually using process safety systems to automate the startup and shutdown of process units. So that's a classic case of both, you know, combining uh, efficiency, you know, better startups, better shutdowns that happen faster and safer. So we're, we're combining both efficiency and process safety. So I think going forward, you're going to see more safety systems used for startup and shutdown. And to use your words, uh, that is a mantra for doing well by doing good. Okay. Um, it appears in the research that I did and what I'm reading in the press is that integrated control and safety systems can help improve process safety, yet there are many holdouts who argue that at least in some circumstances, safety systems and control systems should remain separate. Is there a good case for that continued separation? Well, uh, the thing I've learned over the years about process safety is it can be a very emotional subject with some people. And there certainly are those holdouts that believe the process safety system should be totally separate and isolated from any other system in the plant. However, that is not the trend nowadays. The By far the majority trend is what we call a uh, separate but integrated architecture. And, and that's an architecture where the actual safety controllers uh, or the logic solvers in the safety terms are separate, they're dedicated to safety functions. But the uh, operations, HMI, uh, you know, the operator consoles, if you will, some of the maintenance functions, some of the engineering interfaces, they're handled in much more of an integrated fashion so that an engineer can sit at a common terminal and configure both the basic process control system or DCS and configure uh, using, you know, a different set of blocks and tools and software, but from the same console also configure the safety system. And likewise, you know, the operator in the control room on one console is seeing information from both the safety system and the control system. So this, this architecture, if you will, of uh, separate but integrated is definitely the trend. The uh, systems that are totally isolated are, are fewer and fewer. And uh, you'll see, I think if you look at the marketplace, most of the main automation uh, suppliers have either purchased or developed their own safety systems and are coming up with this integrated uh, approach. So the, the thing we're hearing from a lot of people nowadays is that, you know, the exact architecture, whether it's dual or a triple modular redundant TMR or a quad is, is not as important and the discussions are around, you know, the exact architecture are not as emotional as they used to be. Uh, the most important thing is that the architecture you do use, that it be certified. And, and by that I mean it's, you know, passed some uh, very rigorous design and testing standards and that a, uh, a certification agency has actually certified it as acceptable for the application that you're going to use it on. Are there ways for process industry leaders to build or improve the process safety cultures in their organizations without being prodded by a horrific accident? And if so, what are some of those ways? Well, uh, we always say that safety starts at the top of the organization. I think that's why you're seeing, you know, people placed in the C-suite with this responsibility. But, you know, even at the plant level, the unit operations level, uh, unit managers, uh, they are typically incented, financially incented for uh, safety results. And, you know, this feeds back into the company's uh, OSHA ratings, uh, their insurance costs, et cetera. So you'll see the management level at the plant oftentimes has a bonus tied to uh, safety on, on the particular unit. Now, in the total scheme of things, you know, the process safety system, or in particular the logic solver or safety controllers, they, they really do have a pretty good reliability and track record. 
Usually in a safety system, it's the sensors and final control elements that cause a lot of the problems. Looking, looking at the process safety system in total with everything, uh, certainly the culture has to be not only look at the logic solver, but to look at the, the, whole, the whole safety system in total. And really, you know, if, if a unit manager thinks about it, automating more of his operations is one answer to improving the safety record. You know, when we go back and look at some of these horrific a uh, accidents, uh, oftentimes it was known information and somebody bypassed something that shouldn't, shouldn't have been able to. So in, in those cases, more automation and uh, better safety systems uh, would have helped. Okay, Barry, listen, thank you so much. Those were very useful insights. I, I know that people listening to this are going to appreciate it. Thank you for talking with us today. I'm Nancy Bartels. Thank you for listening.